admitting everyone. Ava. My name is Rosie. I am the Arts and Culture Specialist, and I will be streaming this live on YouTube as well. So if you have any complications, um, you can go ahead and tune in to our YouTube. And uh, if you did log in, then you must have uh, received that email. So that email also has the YouTube link on there as well. Um, so I am going to introduce Deborah. Most of you probably know her. She um, has worked with the city and done some really great things for us. Um, so we are really excited to be hosting this with you, Deborah. Thank you so much for uh, being here tonight. And uh, we can go ahead and get started. All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm uh, shooting live from Live Here, Arizona. And I know some of you are joining. Well, that's my, this is my chair. Lots of different places. I'm glad that we're all tuning in. This happens to be a great attempt at going live. And I hope and pray that you were able to follow along, which I know you will. I've done enough of these. Some of you have done some of these paint nights before. I've done some of these art lessons. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to be right here, and we're going to paint uh, what I call Desert Night together. So 
faces. I haven't seen so many of you in so long. So some of you I know, so of myself. I, oh my gosh, I just love seeing all of you. If you don't have these on hand, these are the secondary colors. So purple, orange, green. We can make these from these. So don't feel like you're um, at a disadvantage if you don't have uh, the whole plethora of colors out in front of you. I can help you mix them though as you go along. So let's talk about what we're painting. Is everybody familiar with Van Gogh's starting night? So he did um, a painting in the Impressionist style where he used a lot of uh, texture in his painting and he pretty much dab on uh, his paint in a pretty rough fashion. He was actually in an insane asylum at the time when he painted that right out of his window. And it looked like a beautiful desert farm at nighttime. And it had all the little twinkling stars. Well, I live in the desert. I don't know where you live. You do not have to do a cactus, cactus like I have in this picture here. So you might want to do the cedar tree just like Van Gogh did, a palm tree. So when we get to the tree part, you put your the background you're going to choose either orange or blue. Disregard my little blob that I was working on up there. I was doing that with Denise one time. So you're going to do blue or red, and or red orange, really, is what I did. I just mixed a little bit of red and just the yellow that made like a red orange. So that's what you're going to put on your background first. So are we ready to paint? So, um, for the second time, instead of painting the whole thing red or blue, I'm going to have you mark out where the stars and the moon actually are for our, for our starry night. So, you're still going to dip into your blue or red, but does everybody have all their paint ready to go? You can draw in any color you have, preferably not white, unless you're drawing on a really dark skin you call it red. So I'm going to draw it in orange, or red orange, or red. One, so you can see it, but two, because um, I want to use the red as my background. So this is going to be one of our stars. Just pretend like it's going to be a white yellow in there. So can you see that? I hope y'all can see that. All right, so maybe I'm going to have one little star that's going to be small. And maybe that next star, a little bit larger, is a big circular star. Or just ball of fire, right? And maybe one like this. So later, after I've done all around the stars, I'm going to come back in and do yellow and white. So that's why we're just avoiding that spot right there. Okay, and how about right here? You might be doing blue, so draw your circles in blue if you're having a blue sky. All right, and I'm going to have a nice big moon over here, so I'm going to draw a big moon shape right there. And a little tiny little guy here. I like odd numbers, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do have seven, and I might add later, maybe I can add more tiny ones later in this one. And I like to do this Okay. Yes? Now, what is a horizon line? Well, a horizon line is where the sky meets the ground. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit so you can see. I'll talk about that for a second. So this would be my horizon line. You notice it's not smack dab in the middle of my canvas. It's about a third of the way up. For right in front, you do not have to be straight. In fact, in nature, there's really nothing straight in our like, the globe is round in reality. So your you could your horizon could have a big mountain, several big mountains. It could be rolling hills like this one, right? It could be a very peak like this one. So you decide what want your horizon line exact or shape to be. And you're going to draw that on right now. So let's do that with the same color brush. Same color that's on your brush. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark about a third of the way up from my canvas some lovely silver. Like that. Oh. And let's bring it to this. Oh, we can stop 
I'm going to take a little bit bigger brush. You could have used your foam brush, your hog hair brush, and I am going to fill it in. If you want to make orange, mix your red and your yellow together and make orange. I'm just going to fill this in all around my stars. When I paint skies, I want to go left to right, left to right. If you can't see really well, please let Miss Rosie know and she will let me know. Because I can't hear you. I can't, but you can write her questions and I can, uh, she can feel them for me and I can talk to you about them. Just so I don't get paint all over my keyboard because I tend to get paint everywhere. Alright, here we go. So I'm putting in that nice orange sky right around all of my circles. Hopefully you've got some lovely music in the background. Especially if you don't want to listen to my voice. If you do this um, project later, it will be up on YouTube as a saved recording. Uh, so if you miss any part, then you take a break, the dog will let you sledding out, then you will be able to go out and do that and come back and play part and watch this video. Um, for those of you that tuned in through the city link, thank you very much because you guys are an advantage. You get to ask me questions, whereas if you're watching it on YouTube Live right now, uh, we're not moderating, you know, we're not uh, over there checking all those questions. So you, you get to interface with me. And here we go. I'm going left to right. Getting that canvas on. I'm working on a larger canvas today than you, uh, just so that. I can show it off better. Okay. Am I going too fast?
we have a creative aging program. Some of you I know from that, and um, and I do that kind of program throughout the West Valley. But for the 50 and over crowd, which I'm almost in that crowd, so I can be taking the classes. So, uh, but it's really fun because we meet, we speak, and we do projects in all mediums. I don't just do post painting. I'm really in the fiber art right now. And so I just made this particular scene here in fiber art. All right, I'm going to pull it up a little higher now. Ooh. About got everything done above the horizon line. So even if something were to stay white, you would paint it white. You don't want to leave anything blank on the canvas. You always want to cover it. One, it's a good protector, but two, it just it, um, lends itself to the same texture throughout your canvas. Okay, so I'm cleaning off my brush. I might put a little bit of orange down here because that's what I did in this one. I had a little bit of orange down here in the field. This is like my Julia Child uh, take one half casserole out of the oven. This is like a halfway point before I get to this point. Okay, we're trying to get to this point. So this will be halfway. Okay? Alright, here we go. Let's keep on moving here. How do we do a painting this size in just an hour and a half? We can do it. So I'm going to put a little more orange, just a little bit. Right here. But I'm going to save room for those purple mountains majesty that I really like. So I'm going to save a little room for that. I don't know how many people suggested I go get a uh, big hair juice so that I pretend like I was the long Bob Ross and I thought, oh boy, I have paint like stuck in my hair if I did all that. And I would just be, wow, yeah, that would not, that would not go very well. And cleaning off my brush a little bit more. When you clean your brush, just swirl it around in the water and then go back and forth on a napkin. Don't squeeze the hog. If you squeeze the hog, your hair's going to fall out. So you need to just squish that little um, brush around in the water and go back and forth until it comes clean. See, it's already coming clean and I don't have anything rest. Don't squeeze it. You pull the hair right out. Okay. Also, when you're painting, it's okay during our hour and a half session to leave the, the brushes in your paint cup um, to keep them moist. And then when we're done, make sure that you go clean them and lay them flat like this. If you leave them in the cup like this, guess what happens? Next time we come back to paint, which is March, we're going to paint again March 21st. If your brushes are going to be bent and you're going to be sad and you're not going to have to. So I just I want to make sure that you protect the brushes. I don't care if it's even that. You don't want to leave it like that. You really just want to clean it and lay it flat. Okay. So ready for the next part? Moving right along. I might have to tell everybody to give me a thumbs up because I can't do this. Some people I can't even see your picture, and you probably chose not to show me your face. And I totally get that. You might be painting somewhere that, you know, you don't want to show your face. Or maybe you're painting in your pajama size. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I'm good. All right, here we go. We're going to now um, go ahead and fill in the rest of this white canvas while this is still drying up here. So I think what I would like to do is maybe some of these purples and blues that I see. That's the underlying color. I have like a blue and uh, a lavender and a purple. So if you have blue, to make it light blue, guess what? You add white. White is what makes it light. 
selling you stuff you already know. That's okay. Just keep on painting and doing an awesome job while I'm um, telling everybody else how to make purple. Okay, so we're going to make some light blue first. And I've got some blue and white right here on my canvas or my palette. I'll call it my fancy palette. So um, I'm going to take lots of white and a tad of blue. Do not use a lot of blue or you're not going to get that pretty light blue. So it's mostly, it's mostly white with a tiny bit of blue. Get that. Okay, so I'm going to that to go right along my horizon line. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. Now, if you're like, who has blue mountains? Well, if you're painting from Virginia, I know you got blue mountains. If you're painting in uh, New Jersey, mm, you have mountains, maybe you should have mountains. I don't know, you have mountains. Yes, I should have yeah, we have mountains. I can see you So, um, I think what, um, what I love about it is, you know, that you know, purple mountains. I think when the sun's going down and we're talking about nighttime, it just glows. They just have this beautiful glow. And I love it's like the color. It doesn't have to look exactly like what people like, draw a black silhouette of mountains. That's kind of fun. Um, so let's go ahead. You do not have to do it like mine. You can have green mountains. If you're in Ireland, uh, you can make your own little green hills and that would be awesome. By the way, I would love to see your artwork. So if you um, want to share it with Rosie, let's put some a blue horizon on here. Now, how do you make purple? Well, remember back from your kindergarten days, or maybe your kindergartners joining you today, but I've got red and blue here. Am I going to use a lot? I don't want to use it all in it. I'm going to take half red, put it over here, half blue. I say half, it's just a dab. It's not a whole lot. It's like a dollop. Not even a dollop. I guess that would be like a, a midget. Does that work? I don't know. I'm going to play this back and go, what's she talking about? Okay. <laughs> so this is purple. Or like eggplant. Right here. It's beautiful. I really love that purple. Okay. So I want to put a little bit of that in. Oh, that's a little too dark for me. I'm going to take a tiny bit of white. Now, when I'm doing mountains, I like to see uh, the definition between one or the other. So this mountain might be in front of this mountain. This mountain might be in front of this mountain. So do you see how I'm creating some definition here? So we've got more on this like this. Still using my hog hair brush, by the way, because the hog will hold more paint than a horse hair with synthetic brush. And when I'm just starting out, I want to get some paint on my skin. If I leave this canvas too white for too long, I'll quit. So I just keep on trying to get it all covered. Okay, now I'm going to add more white to my purple. I really, really want to get some of that lavender. Maybe if you put a little more red than blue, you're getting magenta. Some of you I know love magenta. Oh, yes. Okay. Now, typically, the closer it gets to the bolder the color. But remember, this is nighttime. And the light from the stars are shining down the mountainside, and we're looking at this probably out of our window, hopefully not in the same asylum. But that may be where you are, I don't know. Maybe you could be somewhere that you don't have to know where you are, but you're having fun. That would be good. Okay, here we go. I think we're all going to go insane if we stay inside in a while. You know, like, if this is ever archived, people won't even know what we're talking about 50 years from now. I'm not just talking about it. All this thing is like... Okay, so I'm going to make a little more purple for myself, a little more red, a little more blue. Woo! I see everybody's busy. I 
see a lot of hands moving. That's good. Okay, so now I made a little bit more magenta. I'm going to put that on one side of my mountain for the moon. See, this is my moon over here. So he's going to be shining down onto my mountain. Okay, so I'm going to make one side a little different than the dark side. Had me in my class, I say that all the time. I can do that so much. Star Wars fans kind of fun to say. Okay, here we go. So I am going to now make a little more purple. Which is very well. And you don't have to go storm by every color. You can make the beauty look like you have. And I'm going to make the dark side a little dark. Um, yeah. I call it the sculling. I'm just kind of sculling so you can see. You can still see the lavender in your knees. Okay, so my heels are coming alive. Yes. Alright, I'm going to now add a little baby blue back into the basin of the of the uh, hills or moss or I'm going to add a little baby blue back in down here. You know, the further you are away from something, the lighter it will be. Plus, this is getting toward the horizontal plane, so the light is shining down onto that horizontal plane. Okay. Wow, we only have a couple more strips that need something. They need some covering. So, in my picture, this one, right? You can see I have a little bit of limey green. Well, it was a farm that he was looking out on. Here where I live, um, we have a very, I guess, it is, you know, a green that's kind of murky and muddy. It's not a, a bright, bright green like maybe where some of you live. So I kind of, I love that kind of yellow green, but I can pop it up a bit with some white. And make it glow. Because remember, it's nighttime. I know this doesn't look like nighttime. Just remember, this is the halfway point. Okay. I'm gonna put that back down because I'm not in the direction. I can't. I can't see the whole two things. Well, maybe I'll look at that. I don't know. I'll be another slide. So I'm gonna make some. I had some green already. If you don't have green, guess what? A little yellow, a little blue. When I mix those together, oh my gosh, I get a really beautiful green. That is really pretty. But it's too dark for me because my moonlight is going to be shining on that. So I really want to add some white to that and brighten that up. You can use green as a can, make your own green. Green is a fun color to make, I think. I don't like when you're buying it out of the can. This usually comes Kelly green, like that, and I'm always changing it. You know, it usually comes like that, the Kelly green color. But I love all the different greens. They have staff green, um, Philo green, just to get them to the All right, so I'm
mixing wet on wet. It's wet and I'm mixing wet here. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Okay, so you might have a, a lot of green in yours. Maybe you have brown, nothing grows where you live. Maybe you have a pond. We have a question here from okay. Wayne Martin. So the question is, uh, he has a lot of blotch, uh, blotchy areas in his sky. Um, is that because he doesn't have enough paint on it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure. 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 Um,
blotchy areas in the sky. If you've got blotchy areas in the sky, it's probably, um, yes, you need more paint or your brush stroke is very, for lack of a better word, hairy. You know, you're just, you're more dry brushing. So, you need to put more paint on there, maybe wet your brush a little more, get it hydrated, and, um, and fill in. We're going to be covering, a, like this is just one covering, and we're about to cover more on top of this. So, well, like if I bring this closer to you, you'll see that there are some, you can see my brush marks, right? Yeah. But we're going to be putting all those streams of light and everything else in there, so I'm not too worried at this point if you have a sky that's not looking like this. Does that answer your question? Yay! I see a nod, so. Is I that, see. Is that, is that Brenda? Oh my gosh! That's, that's, wow. I love seeing some familiar faces I And I'm actually going to take this time as well to link Deborah's Bravo Venmo and um, the some some tip links here in our chat box. Um, it, donations. She's taking any donations. If you're enjoying this, go ahead and uh, um, give her a little thank you for joining us today. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and link that, like I said, in the chat box here on um on our right hand, that should be on right on the right hand side there. Thank you so much. Yes, I appreciate anything that helps me um, continue to do what I do and be able to uh, bring this to you. And thanks to my uh, lovely assistant, my husband, helping me put all the sound and lights together over here. If you saw what setup we have, you'd be like, ah, I'm like, I'll try not to trip up all the wires and everything. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful. Um, I wanted to do this as a free class to get started, and I'm trying to learn how to do all this. And uh, your your opportunity um, is just uh, more than more than love and acceptance. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. But you don't have to. I'm just offering this to just for so you have to get out and have fun. Well, be in and have fun. Okay, so let's move on if there's um, not any more questions. I think we're kind of all up to speed, right? We've got exactly about um, 45 more minutes into it. This is the perfect, this is the star halfway, all right? All ready? Okay. So I want to go ahead and put in those beautiful uh, stars and moon. And if you haven't contaminated your yellow and your white, you might want to get a little bit more yellow and white. If you don't have white, like you just do, you know, you didn't want to go out and brush out your score and try to find that and lift your health. And just, um, you can come back at the very end and put white on because that white is that just that pop at the end that's going to make everything uh, come to life. Yellow is a transparent color. So when you put yellow on, you're going to be like, you're going to keep brushing it on because you're like, this is just not, it's not showing up very well. It's because yellow is transparent. So I'm going to put the first layer of yellow, but I'm going to have to come back later and probably put more. So don't keep going because you're just brushing it right back off. Put the first layer of yellow on, just like this. I don't care if it goes outside. Yellow on there. If you want to mix a little white into your yellow at this time, that will help, actually, the transparency will help make it more opaque, because white is opaque. White's not a color, we add it to the tent, but it is opaque. I love, too, that it's 
picking up a little bit of that orange in the background. I right, will bring the canvas a little closer to you. Just a second here. And you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, now I got some little balls happening here. Okay, I'm not going to try and put more yellow on it. See, you can see some of that orange coming through, and I love that. I actually love that it's picking up some of those surrounding colors. Remember, this is an impressionistic style painting. It's not about realism. We're not trying to make perfect little books hurt. It's just fun to see this moving ball. In fact, if you look at Van Gogh's work, it is very moving. You know, it looks like the wind is just howling through there, and that's what we're going to work on next. With no howling wind. And it feels like you're almost there, what it's like to be like, what the weather pattern might be like to blow it on. Okay, so we're going to make those air currents to that wind blowing. And I did mine in blue. All right, you see that big blue? Remember I told you I think that orange and blue love each other? They do. They like each other. So we're going to, I'm going to put a blue line. If you're doing a, a, a blue background, you might still want to do light blue, so that means they're similar in color. So if you did, like if your whole sky was blue, you could still put the light blue. If you're going to use uh, orange current or maybe some lime green on your blue background, you may have to do a couple of coats because you're going over a dark color, right? Okay. Let's so you may have some light blue still left over. I've got a little bit. I gotta clean my brush from all that yellow. Oh, this is gonna be so fun. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna get a little blue. I'm gonna get myself some white. That brush is too tiny. I need a different brush. I have a bag called Yucky Brush. So when they get really bent up like that and then flop feet, they go in my yucky brush bag. And they get used for collage uh, using, you know, using a uh, glue. Um, so don't ever throw away a brush unless it's hard as well. Okay, so we got some light blue. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start adding those beautiful wispy lines. All right, so this is Drawing with my brush. Look at the, my arm is moving in the arm. If you're doing like this with your wrist, and like that, that's for detail work. We're not there yet. We're not doing the detail work. So drawing with my arm all the way across the painting, getting that nice light blue hair color. This is movement going on. Or a jet stream, just went by, a falling star. Okay, I'm going to go around these circles. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's really fun. You know, you know make loose you loose. I don't think they know that this part is just kind of me. I already did a fly plane with mine. I don't think he did that. But he's not here, so he can't ask them. We have Barbara Coffee saying, Kevin says all our paint is brown. <laughs> um, well, you got to start over. <laughs> when you make brown, it means you took your, you went and you did it all, you mixed everything together, that's how you make brown. So I would pour some fresh paint on a fresh plate and use one at a time. Stay away from mixing all of your colors on the place. I hope that answers the question, Barbara. Brown um, is not on the color list, but you can do a little fun that you can make brown from all of the colors. Okay, all the 
different shades of brown. Red brown, blue brown, yellow brown, light brown. Okay, so I've got all this movement going on, right? And now I want to just use white.
again, if you do not finish this in the time that we're live, you'll be 24 hours, it will be up, and it's recording on YouTube. It will be uh, the City of Good Years Arts and Culture Commission's um, um, YouTube studio, and you'll be able to access that. So you will full public to see. Alright. I'm just going to circle those beautiful balls in the sky. I mean, if you're going to call it a starry night, then might as well have big stars, right? You could have made a tiny little star, but that's fine. Okay, I'm even going to make some thinner rings. I'm going to make some really big rings of blue and I'm going to go darker now. I'm going to pick up that dark. If you're working with a blue background, then you might want to be just using white as your ring. Uh, I'm just going to put some, a darker blue under my fur. Just using blue out of the can now. So do we have any questions at this point? Anything? Maybe Miss Rosie could let us know. So stop typing your questions if you do have one. And I'll see if I can answer those. Okay, so that's really given that style and definition at this point. Um, I think I'm going to still stick with the blue for a little bit longer here. And I'm going to just start adding a few little dabs. So I call dabs like dashes or some kind of um, uh, texture for my impression of style. You could have used dots, you could have used um, little circles, I'm just going to make a few dashes. You see what I'm doing? I'm creating texture to make it a little more of an impression of the wind stopping and starting and marching along. And that's just kind of my thing. You do not have to do that. I just like that. And I'm going to do it in a couple of different colors. Think of it like stitching. If I were to stitch this, sometimes I stitch right through my canvases. This would be like a stitch line for me. That's a lot of fun. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Maybe I'm just going to do white ones now. See that? Now I've got some white ones going in. Okay. If I were in person, you know me, I'd be walking around looking at all your art, making suggestions. Hard for me not to be there with you, painting with you. But this might be how we do it. You can always send me your art after today. I'm happy to make some suggestions. You can visit my website. Ooh, see, I got some, I got some dashes going on. Okay, I think I'll put a few yellow ones in. I can hear my daughter laughing in the background. She just kind of came home from university. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen her through all of this. We're like, you just quarantine yourself up there. I'm just adding all that in, right? Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I can always come back and 
few more dashes. I'm going to put it right up there. We're going to work down here now. We're going to work at the bottom part here. All right. I'll move myself a little bit closer. Okay. So we're going to work down here on below the horizon line. And we're going to add some houses. I love tangerine. 
So let's make up some orange with a lot of white. And that will be just another little layer in there. So I'm going to take some white, yellow, red, add a red, make a little pinky. I've got too much blue on my brush. So let me try to figure it out. My dirty canceling. That sounds like a man with a drink or something. Alright, here we go. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. We'll teach up from there, right? Okay, so I want to just put that in the sky. I really want the sky to blow. And just having that little bit of peach is just enough difference from red and orange. Wow. So this is in France somewhere. Well, mine isn't, but Van Gogh's was. I can also take my finger, or you can use a napkin. And sometimes I do this. You have to be careful doing this, but I'll dip it into the water, so like my water cup, just a little bit, just to get it a little wet. And I might dab at it. But you can do this if your if your canvas is not dry yet. You can do it. And I'm just adding a little texture. Barely any paint on there. I just want to make it up just a tad so it doesn't look so graphic. Looks more painterly. Yeah. 
here. I'm going to start about, um, probably you can see that, I think about oh, four or five inches from the left hand side. And I'm going to just brush up and then take it. Oh my gosh, this is the mark like the mountain. That's what I wanted to do. Don't stop halfway. If you stop halfway, you just cut it, you cut your eye level off. I feel like you can gotta commit to going half or maybe it's a stubby thing down low. But don't stop right here. I wanna engage the whole canvas, so I'm gonna go really high on this. And when I say high, look, I can go all the way up to this. Beautiful, like it's pointing at it, like it's like, ah, you know, it's reaching the start. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's put another one there. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to need a little blue in my green. My green's too Kelly green, so I want to start out a little bit darker, so I'm going to add some blue to my green. I don't know what greens you all. If you have a final green, you're lucky because that one's already a good one to start with. And that's usually what they come that comes in the beginner sets, is final green, final green. Well I can say the wall of the word of final the top of the picture. I'll get all kinds of messages from famous artists going, you can't play that in my life. Okay, so I'm just making this thing very organic. Being organic. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just, uh, maybe some kind of off like this. All right, so that's just one, 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 one color of green. Remember I said you need to have three colors of green? Well, this is how we're going to do it. We are going to now add the dark side. So we're going to add more purple and blue to the green. I know it's looking like it's not even green. There's a, believe it or not, that's like a good push thing. You can add that brown, it's got left over from a little girl. The brown's got all those colors in there. Okay, so it's getting a little bit to be a nice dark. So this, if this is my moon and I'm shining down here, this is going to be the side that's going to be dark. So I'm going to put a layer of dark on the back side of my aperture. Don't put it on the right side, put it on the dark side, the left side. And here. Uh, you could just use purple or blue right out of the can for the dark color and it's mixing already with the green that's already there. I hope y'all are having fun. If it's starting to skip, just make sure that you brush up enough water on it. Like skip as in you can see the Orange coming through behind it. It just means you are brushing some hydration. Where we live, you know, the air, there's no humidity and it's just pressing and pulling water right out. And remember, so it's a water base, so it loves a little bit of water. Don't make it like watercolor so That's not good. That'll be a different topic. So, speaking of that, I'm doing a watercolor. On Wednesday, 12.30 Mountain Standard Time, remember Arizona has different time, times within our state, so if you're like in Tubac or the north part of the county up there in the Colorado border, border um, make sure you tune in at the right time. We're in good year, um, Mountain Standard Time, 12.30, we're going to be doing some watercolor, some Asian wash, I'll just show you that real quick. So that's going to be fun for an hour and a half. I call it my Lindsay Well Check. Just checking in with you guys and making sure that you still uh, enjoying life and things are happening. It's just fine. So we'll be doing a little watercolor. And I hope you can join me for that. You sign up to um, the link that Miss Rosie's going to put up for you.
can tune in on Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. and we'll meet her as long as you can meet um, through Zoom. I think again it will go live. It will be live and you'll see the good copies that you can uh, zoom in at that time or what you can see at that time. Some of you think the code time would be, uh, I think that would be you're three hours ahead of us. So, um, you have to do it at three Okay, I'm going to do the light side of this few practice. So now I'm dipping, I am just cross contaminating everything now. Let's pour the end. And I just stuck my green, what was on my brush, into the yellow. And I am now going to go onto the right side of the oxygen. It's not blooming, I'm not going to bother all the way. Once again, that was Deborah at DebraGoleyArt.com. Everything's looking really good on my end. I'm seeing some really pretty art. Really? You yeah. can see all their art? Oh my gosh. I can see I can see okay, some. I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull this a little bit closer because we're just about ready to put the finishing touches on. I 
can't wait to see yours. The only thing left that I want to do is a little more dabs and dashes in my mountains, um, in the road maybe. I want to sign my name. You always want to sign your name. It works. Don't hide it in the closet somewhere. Keep it out. You know why? Because you're going to notice when you come and look at this a couple of days from now, hey, it wasn't so bad, right? And you get to see your progress. Like if you were to paint it again, or paint something else, you see how your style is developing and uh, your technique. And so don't feel frustrated if you didn't, if it didn't come out the way you wanted to. You didn't have any preconceived ideas. I didn't give you something to look at. So that's kind of the fun of it, but you're not trying to overthink it. You're just letting your right left brain relax for a few weeks and not have any Thank you much. Okay, so I'm going to now a little more yellow on my brush. Maybe a little place. I don't squeeze out a lot of paint. I don't know if you've noticed that. Because again, it will dry out. So I don't want to pull a whole lot until I need it. Or make a big brown oh. ah. ah. Alright, so I got a little yellow here. I'm just going to pop that into my foreground, or I call it the mid-ground, right? So this is like where, where the cows are hanging out, you know, the sheep. Just a little yellow in there. Maybe there's a path to the town, you know, so let's just a little yellow path over here. Maybe here. He has some haystacks in his picture, like big haystacks. So if you want to draw all those in, you could do some hay hey, barrel looking things up in there with the yellow. I'm, I think yellow is just a fun, uh, bright color to add over their artwork at the end. Again, because it's transparent. So it's, it's letting the other colors come through. Let's put a little bit of it on my opposite. Like that. So they glow a little bit. Oh, I can't wait to see yours. Maybe I'll put a little bit on my mountain. Hmm. If you want this to look like an oil painting at the end, um, what I do is I actually seal the whole thing with a gloss media. And that way, if you were using maybe paints that um, were more like craft paints or not, not the artist grade ones, um, it will bring the whole painting to a different level. So I like to use uh, what I call, um, I just don't want to name it, but, you know, liquid text makes a brand, golden makes a brand, and it comes in different uh, sheens, and this one has a few blocks. So that's all I did to make this one shine. You can see the glare from the light on it. it these are matte right now, right? Because I didn't, I haven't uh, put anything on them. You don't need to, you don't have to put anything on it. Typically, paint out of the tube comes satin finish, meaning it has a little sheen to it. But you might be using something that um, maybe doesn't have that sheen to it. Okay. Alright, I'm just going to add a little red, maybe some pink. I have pink. I need a little pink. Roses. Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Don't get any fresh roses this year. Don't worry about it. You can make roses. You can take some. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just about done. A little magenta down here. Maybe a little more definition purple on the dark side. 
Go ahead and I'm going to hit gallery view on the top right corner and then okay. we can share all of our art pieces. So you just hold that right up to your camera. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at Madeline's and Ken's and Bart Harbor. That's fantastic. They can. Looks 
it's like we're getting a lot of Yeah. <laughs>